So I'd like to turn to and welcome uh, Yelena to the um, uh, forum, and please, you know, if you can share some remarks with Thank us. Thank you. Um, so I'm 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 pleased to be here, and I'm so pleased to have you here. Um, I have prepared remarks, but I was uh, asked, do you want to speak from the podium or from the chair? And I said, I'm going to speak from the heart. So thank you for the Betty for the prepared remarks. I'll put him here, and I'll just I'll just speak about the MDIs. Um, <laughs> and by the way, since Betty mentioned we have a Twitter, would you please tweet that the FDIC is the best regulator in town? <laughs> if you're going to tweet, you know, I'm, I'm having this uh, battle of words with Joseph Auding. I'm like, would you please finally admit I'm a better regulator? And he wavers on me, and I need a stability. I need stability in this relationship. Uh, so anyhow, no, I'm, I'm joking. Yeah, it's wrong. <laughs> um, anyhow, I, I'm, MDIs are uh, crucial to the uh, economic well-being of many communities and the financial stability in the United States. Uh, the FDIC has the most, who's, the, who's better now, uh, 97 institutions, uh, MDIs are within our primary financial regulator, regulator uh, responsibility. And, and it's crucial for us to uh, do what we can to make sure that these institutions are viable. And so when I first came to the FDIC, one of the questions I asked is, you know, give me the listing of the MDIs, tell me where are they geographically, tell me which minority uh, uh, groups they represent, tell me, um, tell me how they are doing. And uh, one thing that became clear to me is that, depending also where the MDIs are located in the country, they're doing better or worse than their peers, and then doing better uh, or worse than, um, um, than the community banks in general. And so as I embarked on a nationwide listening tour, um, going state by state, I have met with a number of MDIs and asked them, you know, what it is that you need from your regulator, what it is that, you, that you're struggling with in general, economically, business-wise, and is there anything that uh, we in Washington can do better to make sure that the environment for you is, is, is uh, more responsive to the needs of your communities? And I heard everything from, um, you know, Section 308 of IREA, uh, promote and preserve the MDIs, to um, uh, we could use more capital, you know, especially for the African American MDIs. The, uh, th there are small dollar uh, um, uh, accounts that are coming in, and they're costly to maintain, and not providing enough capital for the viability of the bank. We, I have heard everything from, um, believe it or not, some MDIs have an issue with the CRA because they're trying to help their communities and the communities where they serve, and those communities are not always very diverse because they're trying to focus on their community. And so f figuring out how to address those issues has become uh, crucial for us at the FDIC. Uh, one of the things that we are looking at is, and, and I'm sure Gravetta will talk about this with the OCC's um, uh, initiation uh, uh, to, to um, uh, reform the CRA, is there an opportunity for us to do more with the CRA to um, um, help the MDIs in some form, and so we're looking at uh, different ways that the CRA could work to um, help the MDIs. Um, at the FDIC, we also have a Community Bank Advisory Council, uh, CBAC, and uh, we have increased uh, representation of MDIs on CBAC, and I would just like to recognize a couple of members we have. Should I make you guys get up? <laughs> that we added King Kelly and Nora. And I, uh, we have added them to our MDI. Where is my, where's my third member? Maybe, maybe they're not in attendance. That's all right. So we have increased the representation of MDIs on our CBAC uh, from one to three out of 18 members. Um, and we're also this fall going to launch a subcommittee for MDIs, about MDIs for, on our CBAC. Um, and those are some, just some of the efforts we're looking at in terms of what can we do to help promote the viability and vitality of the MDIs in the United States. This conference was, um, the, the idea behind this conference was basically to um, highlight the, the issues facing MDIs and also to honor the work that you do in your communities. But for a lot of your banks, your communities would have um, a smaller financial footprint or wouldn't have as great of an access to financial services as you provide. And for that, I'm very grateful to you. Uh, the number of MDIs, like the number of banks in the United States in general, is shrinking, and it's something that we are very cognizant of. Um, I have asked staff here at the FDIC to think of ways to even improve our technical assistance and see if there is anything more we can offer so when there is a failing MDI or an MDI that's looking to consolidate, uh, that we give an opportunity to MDIs to partake in that process, including the training for the MDIs on how to put together a, a solid bid. 
um, we're looking at um, we're looking at some very successful MDIs and asking them, could you share your uh, viewpoints and and tell others how you have done this, right? And and uh, I know we have a few very respectable uh, um, people here, and uh, in in particular, I know that um, we have worked with a number of MDIs to make sure that when we have an MDI that needs to be acquired, that it goes to an MDI. Uh, we have also um, uh, engaged in a research paper on MDIs. I think it will be highlighted later in the conference. It's on our website. Uh, there is data about that paper that I can, I can actually, actually go to my notes on this one because I want to make sure I'm correct. But it, um, the key conclusion of, um, of the paper was basically that the financial performance of the MDIs has significantly improved over the past five years, partly because we're in a good economic cycle. And I think this week marks the uh, longest recovery in the United States history, um, but also partly because uh, you have really focused on your communities and making sure that uh, your, when your communities thrive that uh, it helps you thrive as well. Um, and according to our study, MDIs originate a greater share of mortgages than non-MDIs to borrowers in low and moderate income census tracts and in census tracts with larger shares of minority population. And I smiled because I didn't need a study to know that. I met with enough of the MDI CEOs and the management teams that I know how much they're focused on, on their communities and, and the lending and, and supporting the business activity in the communities. Um, between 2008 and 2018, the number of MDIs declined 31%, due primarily to voluntary mergers and failures. Oh, whoever put my speech, the, the failures were not voluntary probably. But consolidated more gradually overall in comparison to community banks, which declined by 33%. So it's a slightly uh, smaller percentage of decline for the MDIs, but nonetheless, one third was lost in um, throughout the financial crisis. Um, more than three fourths of the assets of merged MDIs and 86 percent of uh, percent of the assets of failed MDIs remained with MDIs, and that's something that we would like to see continue, where most of the assets and the customers from from an MDI go to an MDI if there is an acquisition or if there is um, uh, a failure uh, of, of a bank. And um, I'll just say this, and then I, I really want to turn it to this esteemed panel. Um, as I go around and I talk to banks, community banks in general, uh, and I talk to MDIs, I cannot stress enough uh, what you do for your communities. I was, um, there, there was an Amish bank that was originated in 2012. And we went to their shareholder appreciation picnic yesterday. About 2,000 people showed up in the Amish community in Lancaster County. And I have to tell you, I, I was brought to tears. I actually choked and I had to hold, my, hold myself back as I was trying to address the community. This is the bank that started, uh, it was the first bank that was um, chartered after the financial crisis. And um, they had a learning curve. We had a learning curve with them approving the application. It was 2012. Uh, and it's, it's a very successful community bank that has been able to, um, it has been oversubscribed every time you try to raise capital. Is doing very well. Um, it's now, at, I think, at about almost 500 million in assets. And as I was looking at the community yesterday, I was thinking, I, was, I asked them, why did you start a bank here? And they said, big, big banks were pulling out and we needed our community served. And I looked at that and, and, I, and I looked at the horses and buggies coming in and, and the Amish community coming to, um, to uh, greet each other and to partake in this shareholder and customer appreciation picnic. And I truly was just emotional about the whole experience because this is, this is what you do. You basically um, um, band the communities together and you provide not just financial services, but you find in small businesses that can then sustain themselves in those communities. Um, and as I travel around, I realize that um, in, in a lot of communities, when a bank closes down, so does the main street. And when the main street closes down, the entire community loses. Schools lose, infrastructure loses, libraries lose kids lose, um, <coughs> sidewalks lose. And uh, I think it's important that we do what we can to maintain your vitality and viability, and we are committed to that at the FDIC. Thank you.